I am I'm a commerce student. I've uh, but but I think I still ended up making a lot of mistakes. When I started Nati Ninos, my mother managed my entire finance for that entire launch. What is the perception uh, which which is majorly wrong with today's generation? So when I didn't score the desirable marks in CAT, really took a big pushback. I was disappointed. I was sad. I was crying. <laughs> another episode of Cashwisery's podcast I'm Arpita the co-founder of Cashwisery and I'm thrilled to introduce to you a very special guest today Nipun Jain who is a distinguished leader known for his dynamic approach to building businesses and nurturing startups So Nipun is currently um, uh, the associate director at Razorpay Rice and he has had a very interesting journey uh, building his own business from scratch in D2C space and now he's shaping the future of various startups at Razorpay Rice So Nipun before we really deep dive into your journey would you give us a brief overview of your current role and what was your motivation to join Razorpay Rice Right uh, Thank you Arpita I first of all thank you so much for calling me and making me a part of this podcast series uh and of course uh, answering your question uh, i think it it was actually a very interesting story how it all happened uh i i i received a call from razor pay team uh, way back in september 2022 and the most interesting part which i later got to know that uh, the brief uh, for the role what they were hiring for was was actually that they were looking for someone who has been an entrepreneur and also is a failed entrepreneur mm-hmm. so 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 uh I I actually ended up interviewing I actually ended up giving 5 to 6 rounds and uh, uh, I joined Razor Pay and then the most interesting part was that they were actually building a program for anyone who wishes or anyone who is an early stage startup founder right so they wanted to build something which is uh, relatable uh, a program which solves actual problems for a founder faces in their initial days the struggles they go through and 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 uh, all the possible pain points uh, what they face during their initial days so somehow i think what they were looking for and what i had to offer matched and and that is uh, a beautiful uh, magical story for me at least how i ended up joining razor pay rise Thank and you. and today yes i am leading this program under which we are running various programs everything has a core purpose and a sole purpose that how we can enable next set of early stage startup founders so that is what we are doing at raise up your eyes and we wish to enable the next set of possibly 1000 or 10000 of startups and uh, if if the next 5 or 10 unicorns from india can come out of raise up your eyes i think that is something yeah. we wish to achieve why not uh, yeah. hopefully yeah. and uh, i would just like to say it's one of my favorite programs so there's a very noble initiative right. been very helpful for the founders out there and i think for especially for early stage founders who really yeah. need to start building that community and the connections in the startup ecosystem right. especially those who are not serial founders they are first time founders like myself yes. I think it's a great initiative and the way you've been leading the entire program is definitely commendable. Thank so thank you again for that and thank you for being our guest. Yes. Uh now let's go back to the beginning, you know. Yes, um yes, yes. I'm always I've always been curious about, you know, starting your own business at 22 when you're barely out of college and still yes. figuring out, you know, adulthood uh, basics <laughs> of life. Right, right, right. And right. then, you know, starting a business from scratch, leading teams and so much of interesting things right. happen there. So would like I'd love to go back a little bit into yes. that journey uh, how did you begin um, and uh, you know uh, what really sparked your interest in this very unique space and yes. i'm not introducing that space because only you can do justice <laughs> to that right, so right, let's right. yeah let's get started okay okay so i think i i have to go way back uh, uh, to 2013 uh, so i actually appeared for cat in 2013 uh, right. i gave cat uh, i i literally left my job i studied for 3 4 months an idea was uh, that to score really good and uh, get into a good mba college and uh, the interesting part was i still wanted to pursue entrepreneurship eventually right. so the only uh, difference was that okay first i wanted to get an mba and do probably the same thing what i have done uh, without getting without an mba it. so so when i didn't score the desirable marks in cat i think i think i really took a big push back i was disappointed i was sad i was crying And, and and i think that all 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 those those energies i think led me into thinking that okay should i wait for another year or should i actually start what i anyways want to do uh, eventually in my life so so i think results came in january and and i think february was the time i started uh, uh, searching for all the interesting ideas uh, which i can work on so so for the fact i knew that uh, creativity and and uh, 
uh, B2C businesses always used to excite me more. I am someone who is very sales marketing driven, uh, how to create emotional values out of the products. I was never a techie. I was not, never a product guy. So I knew I have to build something very simple. I cannot build a tech first product. Probably I can only create a value first product. So when I started my research, uh, first thing I realized, okay, baby and kids market is something uh, which was really emerging that time. Uh, because because of increase in all upper middle class and uh, 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 especially middle class people who have been emerging in India because of uh, all the rise and all the all the great things India was doing in that era. So I realized, okay, that kids uh, and babies are something parents would always like to spend on. Uh, then, then, then I went, went deeper down into it and then uh, started working on the next level of things that how, okay, if, if I want to do something for babies and kids, then what? So, so uh, I, I first thought of uh, what would be my USP. So while I was thinking about USP, I somehow, I somehow get to read about a concept of uh, kids salons, uh, which was a very popular concept in US, UK and possibly all developed countries where, where they have uh, exclusive and niche salon spaces for babies and kids. Interesting. In India, I think we have been going to salon, uh, uh, even we being a child, uh, I yeah. think ne that never used to be a great experience. Yeah, no. uh, we, uh, I think most of the kids cry. They don't uh, yeah. find uh, usual salons very nice, yeah. uh, regardless of the fact how, how, how fancy the salon is. So, so, so the idea was very simple. Can we make salon experience for babies and kids delightful? Not just for babies and kids, but for parents as well. as well. That was first thing. That was my USP. And I thought, okay, we can build something on it. And, and, and uh, what, what made it more interesting when I researched... Um, there, was, there was no salon at all which were exclusively built for babies and kids, at least in North India. Mm -hmm. There was one in Pune, one in Mumbai, I remember. Wow. Uh, that blank was the market. There are, in I think, more than 25, 30 crore kids and babies, potential kids and babies in the country who are below the age of 18, I think. And, and, and uh, imagine, uh, there was no salon exclusively built for them. So I realized there is a potential. Um, uh, will, I, will, will that be me or someone else who will be exploiting this opportunity? I didn't know that time. But I definitely knew that there is an opportunity. But parallelly, because of two reasons, one, because of my core interest and second, because I really wanted to build a sustainable business. Uh, so I thought ki my, uh, uh, running a salon might not be a great idea as a standalone business because, because there are limitations when you run a, uh, an exclusive salon just for babies and kids. Mm -hmm. uh, kids and babies are uh, not free for half of the time. Yeah. They are, they are uh, generally busy on weekdays. Uh, weekends are the only time probably you can find the maximum traction. So I thought, ki, okay, why don't I club with, uh, uh, with, with offering curated event planning services again for babies and kids? Mm. Because, because the time is exactly the same. Those parents same. who are looking out right. to, to get something exclusive for their babies and kids. So my idea eventually came out uh, in the shape of uh, building Natty Ninos, which precisely means Natty means anything fashionable, up-to-date, trendy. And Ninos is uh, uh, kids in Spanish. Uh, so, so that's how the brand name came and and we were clear that okay we will have a salon as our f first first primary uh, point of contact for any parents that would be our usp we'll eventually build a community of uh, middle class upper middle class and especially those aspirational parents mm. who always are in lookout to do exciting things for their babies and kids and then eventually we'll 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 uh, convert them into our, our event planning services which were again high ticket price services right. so that's how i i visualize that business idea uh, and um, Thankfully, we, we, uh, I ran it for almost seven to eight years uh, wow. till COVID and, and it was a successful bootstrapped profitable business. And uh, yes, 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 I, it probably couldn't reach those heights how, how we, we perceived uh, today's uh, startup success as in terms of uh, fundings, in terms of uh, huge revenues. But it was a self-sustaining business and, and uh, I could, I could uh, create an eight-figure revenues by the time I was at the peak of my business in 2019 before when COVID hit. So, so that was my journey with Natty Ninos. Definitely, there were a lot of other things as well around, around building that, uh, sustaining that and, and coming out of a lot of, lot of low lights and highlights. But 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 yes, that is what Natty Ninos was about. That's that's truly yes. commendable. Yes. Uh, when I think in today's age, I think there's so much of um, you know glamour with this external mm. funding. Uh, we kind of forget that the, some of the best businesses that India has seen or the world has seen has right. been actually grown 
uh, you know, it started bootstrapped and right. it's it's been a self-sustained revenue generating, revenue sustaining the business and right. the growth. Uh, so I, I think that's a great start and I, I believe some of the best business learnings that you had there, right. which you are now able to offer uh, the startups that you now yes. lead at, as Razor Pay Rise, right? Um, so yeah, now you are, um, you know, leading a community of uh, future founders, in fact, right. early stage founders who will... Right. Hopefully, someday become you know the unicorn founders in future. Um, mm -hmm. So, what uh, what made you um, do this shift? Like, there, was there any uh, you know pivotal moment that you realize that now you want to the next step right, would right. be a corporate job? Right, right, right. So, I think to answer this, uh, we have to go a little back from uh, how Razorpay happened. So, in two thousand twenty one, when I finally decided to close Nati Ninos uh, after a peak uh, COVID times and almost retrying and trying in all the three waves of COVID. Mm. But when I was unsuccessful and I finally lost a lot of money during that 1.5 years, I, I somehow realized that, okay, uh, I have to stop uh, right now. And then uh, one of my mentor, I recently put it on LinkedIn as well. And one of my posts that actually, I ended up talking to one of my mentor, uh, who is Subodh Garg. Uh, he's a very senior finance guy in our ecosystem, currently uh, CFO at Cash, uh, oh, Cash Cashify. I, I confused it with your brand name, Cashfizery. <laughs> But he's a CFO at Cashify. Uh, so so uh, that time he told me on one fine day that, okay, Nippon, sometimes stopping losses is better than hoping for future profits. And that really hit me hard. And and, and I just decided to close everything uh, in the next 15, 20, 30 days. And uh, I started uh, working at my first job at a company called Picker Technologies, uh, which which is, has which has now been acquired by ShipRocket. Uh, yeah. And... and uh, that is a place where I think I think I think everything changed. That was my first job almost in eight years. I I I was part of their enterprise and growth team. I joined them as an individual contributor, and eventually, uh, within within eleven year, eleven months or twelve months, I ended up becoming their assistant vice president and almost leading their entire enterprise sales. So that is where my journey started. Uh, I almost joined that job with with no clarity that okay, will that be the ultimate thing I would like to do. I, uh, that time I was like literally that okay let me just get a job let me just get a salary first uh, and then I'll figure out I'll see uh, will it be ha will it happen for three months six months nine months or twelve months but let me at least get a job but 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 that entire transition just happened I think in in, in so many uh, I would think I I'll say impactful ways that I realized okay job is also not that bad <laughs> if you if you own yeah. what you do yeah. if you if you really work hard if you if you if you are rewarded well. And, and if you are committed to your work mm -hmm. and if you try to build your own small startup within any startup, you can actually uh, uh, enjoy every possible benefit what you what you what you can get in your entrepreneurial journey. Right. Because these startups actually grow from zero to one. And that is what your objective is also uh, yeah. eventually. So so if you do it right and if you show the right ownership, I'm very sure you can build your fortunes while working for others also. Right. But the intent should be very clear. Uh, do you just want to be uh, one uh, uh, another employee of that company or do you want to be what i uh, i personally love that uh, that uh, 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 like example which one of my friend told that okay you wherever you work just be the linchpin of that place uh, mm -hmm. uh, linchpin is that that part in any machine without which uh, that machine will stop working right that may be the smallest part in the machine but but, but uh, the machine crucial. will just stop working if you take that person out of that uh, yeah. uh, that part out of that machine so that has been my core, core, core uh, motto uh, when I moved into corporate life. Hmm. That, okay, it's a job, but but can I be a linchpin of that space? So first I tried to be the linchpin of my last organization picker. Uh, that really helped me with the transition. Hmm. If I would have been just doing that as a job, probably that would have been very difficult. But because I work just like another person who owns a part of that business, I think that made it very easy. Yeah, and, and you and can I, still find the fulfillment that, that you had again a very important uh, word you just mentioned you have to find that contentment and fulfillment hmm. if you don't find that then 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 you will not feel good enough to wake up at eight o'clock go back yeah. to your, go, go to your office work and then probably come back uh, after working 10 hours yeah but if you will find reasons if you'll find things which motiv motivates you uh, find find reasons how company success is your success how you best make sure that okay if something is celebrated are you a part of it? Are you one of the most important part of it, which mm. people are calling out? So I think these are things which actually at least gives me a lot of happiness and contentment. And uh, and I think this is how, how I have been working in this corporate space for last three years. First at Picker and uh, now at Razorpay. Yeah. And 
at least uh, for next few years i don't see myself going back to in, in uh, going back to entrepreneurial Entrepreneur. space Entrepreneur. because i am loving it That's i think amazing. i am I think i'm having a great time it truly really shows in your work mm. and the outputs mm. as well and uh, i was just curious the the first corporate job picker was a startup yes. razor pay i mean of course it's unicorn but yeah. still yeah. like you know pretty much you know grown from a startup not the yes, established yes. traditional public listed businesses yeah. was it intentional um like given that you were an entrepreneur having had your own business or just did it, it just happen? happened to be honest uh, uh, on papers it might looks very fascinating that i built something at my own capacity 0 to 1 when i joined picker it already raised 4 million dollars mm-hmm. so i literally saw their 1 to 10 journey growth yeah and i uh, when i was there that was exactly the time when they got acquired so i saw that entire journey uh uh by where where i saw picker becoming a 20 million dollar to a 200 million dollar company and then razor pay is like that end to 10 to 100 kind of a journey right so in paper it might look very fascinating that yeah. i have seen it all exactly right. but 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 uh, most interesting part here is though i have joined razor pay as an org but but i feel i am back to 0 to 1 because yeah. here i am running something which is very uh, uh something which have we have just recently started Yeah, something very close to the founders of the company, and we are still doing a lot of things as a zero to one product. Yeah, and this is what I tell myself and my team also that don't consider yourself as a razor pay employee. We are a small startup within razor pay, which is called Razor Pay Rise, and let's please work accordingly. We yeah. have to show the same energy and passion which a zero to one startup uh, shows, yeah. and that is what it uh, what what it will take us to take it to the next level. So so though it is a part of a large org which is which is 10 to 100 but for me it is back to 0 to 1 and and i think that's where i i initially told you that for me it's a magical journey uh, i still remember that day where where i was uh, uh, probably crying sad for the fact that okay i had to close my 7 years 8 years old business but how that entire experience led me into a role like raise up a rise yeah So I think it is a part of the larger destiny, and and I'm and I'm super happy again this, how this I ended up being here. Always a plan. We it, it was always a in, plan. Yeah, in retrospect, we can see how you know the dots connected and how we yes, you, we yes. all ended up where we are. Yes. Yeah, Napun. Very interesting thing you mentioned about the zero to one journey, and I would like to know more um, the zero to one concept that you apply today in your current role. How much of you know your learnings from your business and actually doing that zero to one yourself how much of those learnings do you apply today and how do you get your team members to apply those uh, learnings as well right 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 i think uh, uh, though both are uh, zero to one as we just discussed but still i feel there is a lot of difference because because one i was very young when i started uh, way back there that time when i was just 22 so probably i was i think i was very naive i was not uh, having any kind of experience i made a lot of mistakes uh, and and it's actually like uh, uh, buying a new car and probably learning driving for the very first time on that car yeah. so and and on and on 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 a very uh, ironical way that is what i did with actually uh, uh, with while, while i learned uh, driving my car as well <laughs> so 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 i think this is what happened with me on my business part as well because i uh, one i i didn't had too many too many uh, i would say support systems at my family who could who could guide me then i also didn't had too many external mentors and and plus uh, plus plus as i told you i was very young so i did a lot of mistakes i i i i uh, made some crazy mistakes i would say rather and and i learned kept learning out of it and and that was a journey where where i think the uh, the the trajectory of making mistakes or the quantity of making mistakes were way higher hmm. because because i didn't knew anything but 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 uh, uh, the good part uh, uh, coming out of that 0 to 1 falling and again starting something like that uh, this this what i'm currently doing as 0 to 1 now uh, a lot of core values and the core core uh, ways of adopting things and doing things might still be the same probably when i say still uh, things which are still the same are the excitement passion yeah. or probably uh, owning certain things in a way that okay you want to make it big anyhow probably that part is exactly the same mm. but 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 uh, uh, the kind of mistakes i might be making uh, in my initial journey i think i have improved and and uh, made a, i think i've added a lot of experience on top of it now i know not, what not to do uh, there are chances i might still make some mistakes but but uh, now probably i have some kind of an additional experience where probably i can make take bad, better judgment calls 
so i think that's where the 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 transition has been uh, instrumental in a way that okay it gave me a lot of experience yeah. so when i restarted my journey uh, while working for corporate world and 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 that to again at razor pay rise as a 0 to 1 product i think i i i i incorporated all those learnings and and i think that's why the results in this part of the journey are way more aggressive and way more faster and 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 they look very lucrative yeah. uh, whereas in my initial journey probably for the same output i might have taken 3 years uh, yeah. for something where, where which for which i just take 3 months today and and i think ju- just just to complete this answer i remember i don't know the exact lines but i read a quote by amazon uh, founder that he he said that uh, in our entire journey uh, that's how we work that initially we'll do 10x things to get 1x output mm. and you will not realize when uh, you will get into a space where you will just do 1x effort and you will start getting Good 10x things. output i think that is the core value of experience that's where experience really plays an important role so be you doing exactly the same thing but you have that additional 10 years experience right that is what makes the difference exactly and yeah. i think you just get much more efficient at exactly. you know exactly. doing things because when you first do something for the first time i think the learning curve is there which yes. looks like you're doing it very slow and the outcome is coming after super long right. but once you have done it and achieved that when you are supposed to do it the next time it just automatically gets so much faster 100%. um so yeah i mean is there any mistake uh, you remember from the early on in your career? Career, that now you feel that you would have done it differently anything that you would like to shed light on for budding entrepreneurs out there i think a lot of mistakes uh, this is a question uh, this can actually become a separate podcast <laughs> because maybe one one uh, one I, major I, moment <laughs> that you've now reflected you know while doing something and suddenly the bug goes off like you know i should have done it that mm. way at that time i think there were phases i think i think uh, i made few mistakes around uh, around probably spending a lot of money on 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 building certain things uh, which was not required let's say i still remember i spent quite a huge amount uh, when i first opened uh, like i opened my first store hmm. so later i realized probably uh, doing so much of stuff on a rented space was not required right because uh, it is first of all not my space secondly i don't know the longevity of my business then i don't know when my landlord may may kick me out so why did i spent uh, multi lakh rupees on on making the sure that place looks very beautiful or or right. worth sitting or probably for the fact uh, why even my office has to be the most star studded office in my initial days yeah but i was very excited i just started very young and 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 just wanted everything to be perfect but but those were my learnings definitely and and, and i feel uh, especially money related uh, i would say was one of the re- though, though i have been, I'm, i'm a commerce student i've read about finance and taxation and money all my life uh, in my graduation in my school uh, but but i think i still ended up making a lot of mistakes because uh, practical and bookish knowledge are very different and uh, one of the mistake i think uh, that might be very relevant for a lot of uh, uh, upcoming entrepreneurs i think i used to confuse uh, my positive cash flows with with profits okay. uh, i used to assume i have a lot of money uh but but later when i used to do my accounting i used to realize that okay i am not making that much money i am thinking uh, on on what i am making because when after 3 months or 6 months i used to pay out all my vendors yeah. i used to realize oh i am not left with any money and 3 uh, months back i was assuming that i have 3 plus 3 lakh plus surplus right. already with me right. so these are probably out of out of a lot of mistakes uh, the top 2 or the first two which are coming on my mind right now So yes uh, yeah that that's uh, these are very important learnings right. i think the first one you mentioned i can super relate to it because right, right. you know it's like polishing and polishing your mvp right, right, before right. shipping it right, right, right and right. We, as uh, you know tech founders we always always have right. gotten this advice from the ecosystem that don't focus too much on perfecting it because right. the the market has not seen your product you don't even know whether it will right. be used whether it is any useful uh, so i think that the same thing applies across the board whether right. it's a service industry or a tech product and secondly that money uh part is i think very useful i mean especially for our audience here mm-hmm. um because you know at cash wisery we strongly believe that you know managing your money is a lot about discipline mm-hmm. and a lot of times we 
tend to get into this you know false belief i have money like without uh, you know and for something some something like money that is so obvious in the numbers right. we still tend to make these mistakes 100%, so um, 100%. that that is uh, the amazing part of you know mm. money management right so i think right. since we are already on the topic um have you seen any kind of similarities between managing business finances and managing your personal finances or you know the learnings that you mentioned from your managing your business finance or making mm. mistakes have you applied that to your personal finances okay i think that has uh, that experience also has been uh, i think specifically in two parts uh, one during my entrepreneurial journey and how it changed when i got into corporate uh, uh, job so during my entrepreneurial experience i think again uh, adding to your last question i think i did make a few more mistakes i uh, i never used to draw any salary um, and uh, somehow i was working more like a solo founder and i used to assume whatever is the business money is my money and uh, i used to take out a lot of uh, money out from my business books and just used to mark them as personal expenses but 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 what that that led into uh, is 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 one i could never plan my savings Right. Then I could never plan any future investments or or let's say even uh, planning to buy a car was always like a uh, uh, like like a thing that okay with with current financing I I might not be able uh, to ever buy a new car, so I did uh, messed up there uh, while managing uh, those personal expenses out of business books. I ideally should have taken out a salary and practically take out all my personal expenses from that from one particular side. amount. so so i i did that one big mistake and because of that i think during those 7 to 8 years even after doing a lot of great growth numbers i never really saw myself growing uh, in 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 let's say in terms of savings in terms right. of uh, my 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 all over worth i i did see that okay there is some money uh, which is there with me there is some money which is there with my business books in my current account but does nipun have enough worth that is one part i could never figure out hmm. uh, so so that was one thing that has really changed a lot i think after i have got into job so again i i feel that uh, people end up saying that okay job ke sath ye nahi hota wo nahi hota and uh, job ke sath ab save nahi kar sakte ho and and job can not let you achieve your goals i don't know why they say that and what is the perception uh, which which is majorly wrong with today's generation but i have seen that okay it is rather a much well managed way of uh, managing your finance you know an x amount which will gets credited to your account every month you know a y amount of expenses for every month and a z amount which you can save every month right so that personal expense management has rather improved for me when i have got into corporate world and uh, people who say that okay you cannot save enough while you are working i don't know uh, where they are falling short because because if you really want to feel that you don't earn enough because you spend a lot more than what you were spending previously is not a way to complain about your current salary right so so if you just have got into that trap where you have more than 2 lakh rupees emi so uh, let's say if you want to buy a 3 crore rupees house and you want to have a 2 lakh rupees emi and you have a 3 lakh rupees salary and now you start crying i am not able to save enough because i have a 2 lakh rupees emi yeah you kind of went beyond your means you so you are like... paying 2 lakh rupees as a investment that yeah. is your saving how can you not count emi as a yeah. part of your saving so i think that is where a lot of people uh, mess around their personal savings uh, during this corporate uh, how, yeah. how 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 can be managed during corporate job but i feel if you manage it right uh, i think i think uh, you can easily manage your savings when you are in job and business i just recommended you i would highly recommend anyone uh, regardless of the stage of the journey you so, take out a personal salary and do your personal expenses exactly. out of exactly i think i think oh. a lot of entrepreneurs they focus so much on the business right. and the business finances right. they kind of forget that they are a living breathing human being yes, that yes, needs yes, money yes, yes. and uh, everyone needs a salary i mean yes. fine take out minimal amount of salary but you will need expenses we yes. also need to have the motivation to work towards a business yes. especially like you know funded startups um you there is cash there for a lot of operations there could be a uh, you know minimal amount that you take out as founder salary and kind of plan your uh, you know finances from there 100%. so uh, that's definitely a very important point i think if you know founders are watching our podcast to remember that you know even as an entrepreneur you can do the salary thing for yourself yes, and regardless of the amount you take out exactly. uh, but, and but 
uh, don't do start doing those things that uh, that that you just take out a random amount out yeah. of your books uh, that definitely in an emergency work. and and then later uh, you are you have completely made a mess out of your business exactly. books exactly i think so, i think salary does provide a certain amount of discipline yes, and and yes. you're right actually mm-hmm. if you manage your salary well there's so many people who have built wealth and in fact yes. a lot of them have come on our podcast as guests as yes. well they have built wealth just by a normal corporate career yes. and they have grown in their career of course there's a lot of investments you need to do one is in yourself so that you grow your income as well right. so uh, that surplus also keeps growing and a lot of investment you need to do in terms in with your money right. so uh, another pitfalls that um, you know that i usually come across among especially amongst youngsters mm-hmm. is as their income grows their expenses also grow right. at right. the same amount so essentially their savings are not growing over time right. Right. so that is a that is a big mistake uh, and as a salaried individual if you continue to upgrade your life in the same proportion as your salary grows you will really you are right you will not be able to make money and you will not be able to get rich right. so any any piece of advice for people who follow that lifestyle and you know how you would actually do it differently see i might have a little uh, mixed view on this i am someone who believes in in fulfilling desires dreams and building a checklist of things i want in my life yeah so i am not someone who will just chase savings hmm. but parallelly doesn't also mean that i don't save right. so probably if 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 uh, i have fixed expenses of let's say 30% so at least i bucket it like that that okay 30% or 40% are my fixed expenses which are unavoidable yeah. uh, considering me being the only uh, income income uh, source for my family and then i i have a special bucket uh, with with about 15 to 20 percent allocation which i keep for my wishes and desires and then then let's say the rest 40 50 percent is what i end up saving i think uh, issues can happen if your bucket uh, list or desire list uh, percentage is as good as 50 percent yeah. that may be the first call out where yeah. people can go wrong second uh, you 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 start probably acquiring stuff at the wrong age probably when you don't even need things so let's say if you if you want to just uh, think that okay can i buy a house at the age of 23 and then you start feeling a lot more pressurized because uh, you have to actually take out a 1 lakh rupees emi out of your 1.25 lakh rupees salary yeah. so even that is something i'll never recommend anyone yeah. because if you really want to save like this this is not the way Uh, just make let's let's keep that percentage very clear. What is an amount you would want to use in savings slash investments slash paying any EMI, which is contributing to any investment. Correct. Of course, I will not count car EMI as in as an or investment. Or iPhone EMI. Or yeah. iPhone <laughs> EMI. That would I would put in that twenty percent. That's expenses. Huh, yeah. That's an expense which might be luxurious expenses, yeah, aspirational right. expenses. Aspirational. Because they are also important. I feel if you are really working hard for nine hours a day. Yeah. At least I am someone. I get motivated by 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 driving a great car. Yeah. I get motivated by wearing a nice watch, carrying a good bag. But but again, as we just discussed, it has to be a part of that salary, of not that. the majority part yeah. of that salary. So that would be my only recommendation: that plan this this entire mix really well. Yeah. Chase dreams as per your current growth and trajectories. If you will start chasing things which are beyond your current capacity, you will never feel good enough. Exactly. And you'll always feel you are not doing good. Plus, you'll always be broke as well. So, so, so I think those are the people who who we actually f- see all around who are generally very dissatisfied with their work, dissatisfied with their salaries. They generally uh, compare themselves with people who are doing a little better. Right. Without realizing that okay, in India, even one lakh rupees salary is a great salary to have. Right. You can f- fulfill any possible wish with a one lakh rupees plus salary in India. Uh, you also know, I am sure there are so many numbers around that. Yeah, we are we are possibly with the one lakh rupees plus. Ah, uh, वो जो एक नंबर वाला salary we are amongst like the top one percent possibly people in the country. Yeah. So even if you still don't feel privileged, if you still feel uh, not good enough after being in one percent of the country, uh, for a country wrong. which is as good as one forty crore people. Yeah. Then there is a problem on your side, and yeah. you are chasing a wrong trajectory. So that is my all over, yeah. uh, like a comprehensive advice. Uh, how, what I think I would the buckets part people. you mentioned mm-hmm. is very important. We right. always go with the fifty, thirty, twenty rule kind of thing, okay. where we okay. advise people to at least save and invest twenty percent of their salary. Right. So yeah. sure, by all means, fifty percent could be with all your needs. And nowadays, rental in big cities is uh, big, yes. but you can yes. also include your EMIs if you have. 
you know right. other expenses 30% could be you're right you need to have aspirations you need to fulfill your desires because if you're working right. so hard for a career you need to reap the benefits some along the way and some you should keep for future goals right so right. Right. i mean it's kind of impractical to assume that you'll save all the money right. so yes. that also is a goal that is a little unattainable and you kind of fail at it and then you feel even worse right. so rather you would just take that into account and put some 30% of your salary or whatever yes. percentage that suits you and allows you for enough surplus or savings right. that you know that you will splurge you know that you will go out to eat or whatever you are interested in have that latte if you want or avocado <laughs> right. toast whatever right. you know uh, uh, floats your boat and right. Um, right. you know go for those holidays but then right. again it's very important that you're not getting into debt uh, or credit overdraft for these right. things right. or right. or you know this emis for luxurious goods that you probably should delay a little further right, right? Right. and uh, that constant surplus that you have the the percentage that you have decided 20% that you want to save and invest as your income grows that person should at least remain the same or slightly grow only that should not okay. you know start to reduce it shouldn't be that you're saving 1000 rupees even in a 1 lakh salary or even in 2 lakh salaries the same 1000 rupees I know, I know. right that's so, a trap where where a lot of people gets into uh, yeah. with their increased salary they are not able to increase a incremental amount in their savings incremental so that percentage mm-hmm. needs to be justifiable right. that you're right. uh, you're ga- getting 1 lakh or 2 lakh right like 20% of that Makes needs sense. to go into future uh, savings. So uh, for sense. for yourself do you do any regular investments or you just like put aside money for No I think I think uh, I'm I'm not a not a very aggressive uh, investor I would say in a way that I'm not very experimental. So I think the most safe thing I end up doing is putting some money in mutual funds on monthly basis where I have set a specific amount which automatically gets auto debited on day 1 so that I don't have that amount in my account. Uh, I put some amount uh, as a part of FD, which cause I I really feel that you should always have some liquid money which you yeah. can just immediately click on a Correct. bank app uh, uh, that okay you need that money immediately in your right. account, and then 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 of course PPFs and other things are by default investments which are anyways required, and I think a very small part of it I think goes into share market, uh, which again I would not call out that I am someone very good and and very. passive uh, or or i would say rather i i'm passive i'm not active uh, in in that share market so so these are three to four buckets what i am investing in today and um, uh, what i really wish to do and probably aim to do next i don't know how how great it it is as an idea uh, coming from a person who uh, i think i think you'll never recommend people doing that but let's say i always wish to buy a grander house where i live in so i don't know how smart it is as a investment to buy a house in these uh, today's world which are super expensive and you end up paying emis for 10 years for a thing which might not be even worth that big or that great after 10 years but but because in india we do a lot of things aspirationally and emotionally yeah so for me that is possibly the next uh, next investment i would like to do whenever i feel i'm comfortable interesting yeah. all the best for that yeah. goal and i would say that you know for as a you know financial so called you know advisory perspective right. i would say that uh, one there is no one size fits all you know finance is not a you mm. know a one size fits all uh, thing that you can do it's very personal to people and um, when it comes to buying a house i strongly believe that a house which is residential is not an investment it has all the emotional value for right. it right. and if you need it go ahead and purchase it of yeah. course within the affordability means so if you want, wish to go, go get a grander house i'm sure you will climb up your career ladder and earn that income mm. and then go ahead otherwise bank won't even loan <laughs> money right so right. anyway so you can only get something that you can afford so for residential property that's very very personal to people right. as a personal choice a lot of people delay buying a house because they are mobile and yeah, they right, don't right. know where they want to settle down exactly. uh, of course property is an investment is another question altogether and that's something we have addressed a number of times even in our podcast that that is not ideal as your first few investments I'm, so I'm what you've already done is you know very good thing that you have started on with mutual funds uh, you have your emergency funds and have fixed deposits you have also some exposure to stocks although you're not very active but right. you already know that this is something you can capitalize on once you have the time or bandwidth or interest right i think after that If you want to invest in yourself and your emotional well-being, I think a house is great. I am personally a uh, uh, someone who is very attached to her home. Like I, I just do not like to stay out of my home. Like yes, I go out yes. for dinners, and right. my husband will always be like, you know, I know after ten p.m. He's like, let's go home, let's go home, because I start missing home the moment I, I ca- come out. So you know, it's a very personal decision, and. Um, 
we are always about like you know your money is for your own well being right yes, yes. so if it suits you uh, and it will just gives you peace and happiness exactly and it will just it. give you much more motivation to go out exactly. and earn exactly. that money to keep up that exactly. Exactly. you know motivation so right. yeah great so um was money like a, you know a part of conversation in your household because you know where i come from it's been like a taboo topic we never right, knew right. our father's salary we don't right. discuss right, well, right. how was it like hmm. at your while you were growing up so for me i think uh, uh, that this might take this entire discussion into a little different tangent but but uh, for me it was very very different for a lot of reasons uh, because uh, i think i think uh, i i in it is it is otherwise a long story but but uh, i i lost my uh, let's say my father when i was 4 oh, and so uh, i was the only male member in my family uh, since childhood so so there was no actual income source at my home uh, since let's say 1996 when it all happened so managing finances uh, that too by my dadi mom and chachi i have actually seen women uh, managing finances at my home how beautifully they have actually understood the 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 the, the i would say this is what we have uh, this is what we can potentially see this becoming in next 25 years till the time one of our kid will start earning hmm. this is a possible amount which we might need to pay their school fees college fees or any possible uh, uh, like uh, fees possibly for our ed- education i would say x amount of uh, money which we might need for family functions and family commitments uh, then an x amount which we might need for their shadis considering ghar pe char bacche hain aur kabhi na kabhi charo bachcho ki shaadi hogi wo planning usi amount and usi money ke sath hui jo probably my father and my uncle left us with in 1996 so that money never grew Hmm. Uh, because because we were always spending indirectly or directly from principal hmm. so so even even uh, for the fact we were getting some some very small amount of interest or some very small amount of rent from uh, our old uh, khari bauli shop but but uh, probably that was not enough to manage all our expenses so from that time till probably ni- uh, 2017 or 16 i think we were managing all our finances from that principal amount so i saw that very beautifully done by mother by, by by my mother and my chachi i would say how they manage that amount uh, making sure that even in 25 years we could fulfill all our desires all our That's wishes amazing. i'll not say the in the most lavish way but 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 we could still fulfill all our basic desires uh, there was never a instance where my mom would have said ki okay you cannot buy let's say your favorite book or favorite toy or or let's say you cannot go to study in that school Uh, i will not pay your fees i cannot afford it uh, so so that is a kind of a management of money i have seen and uh, and, and as a last thing when i started nati ninos i remember my mother really gave me that option ki okay mere paas bas itne paise hain last uh, to tu ya to mba kar le uh, 20 25 lakh rupaye laga ke kahin pe uh, aur aur ya fir tu apna business start kar le uh, tu sochega ki business bhi karunga uske baad mba bhi karunga to that would be that might be very difficult for me so so those kind of conversation did happen like hmm. all my life aisa nahi hai hamare ghar mein paise ki balki zyada baat hoti thi hmm. because hum bachpan ke pure aadhe time to yahi sochte rehte the ki paisa aa kahan se raha hai aur hame kitna kharch karna hai kitna nahi because we were too naive right. and in the second stage then then we were in that dilemma ki acha kya cheeze kar sakte hain kya cheeze nahi kar sakte because hamare aas paas bahut log bahut kuch karte the to jab mere paas let's say 20 saal ki umar tak gaadi nahi thi to mujhe samajhne mein bahut time lag gaya ki hamare paas gaadi kyun nahi hai मैं यही क्वेश्चन करता रहता था घर पे कि अच्छा हमारे पास क्यों नहीं है गाड़ी ये क्यों नहीं है हमारे पास वो क्यों नहीं है बट जेन प्रोबली आई टर्न लिटिल मेच्योर आई रियलाइज ओके अच्छा इसलिए गाड़ी नहीं थी एंड अब क्यों सेंस बनता है खरीदने का सेंस शायद आज भी नहीं बनता बट प्रोबली आई नो माई मॉम विल नॉट से नो सो दोज काइंड ऑफ कॉन्वर्सेशन वर ऑलवेज हैपनिंग एट माई हाउस मॉडरेटेड एंड लेड बाई माई मदर एंड चाची आई जस्ट एज अ जस्ट मैंशन सो दे रियली मेड श्योर दैट दैट मनी एंड एंड वन लास्ट एग्जाम्पल इवन लेट से वेन आई स्टार्ट नाटी नी न्यूज my mother managed my entire finance for that entire wow. launch so she used to pay the vendors she used to manage the books she used to make sure what is the dedicated amount we have decided to spend and are we spending it right so used to she used to put forward each and every expense of that day into a book so that we don't uh, uh, end up overspending so 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 i think i regardless of any books or education 
I have actually learned business numbers and uh, managing finances from my family. And uh, I think I think that is one of the reason today, at least I hold a great value for wherever I'm, I am hmm. and uh, whatever I have. And I would actually want to tell it to everyone and, and really, really want everyone to be, feel very grateful for the reasons and for the money they have in their life. That okay, whatever you have, be happy. Yeah. Because because a lot of other people in the world either don't have that money or don't have those privileges even to discuss this. That okay, how to possibly invest your savings. Right. Because they don't have savings. So right. at least you have savings. So you should be very grateful. You should have a very great sense of contentment that okay, I'm, I'm at least in that position where I'm able to discuss these things. Yeah. So uh, probably I know this question was uh, a little, little... Uh, Diff- in different tangent and a little emotional for me so probably I would have over explained uh, this no, but, I, but, think but uh, it's a very I hope I have tried answering it's this it's a very uh, important perspective everyone right, needs right, to have because the right. reason we you know we did this started this podcast series was to bring uh, you know money talks from different right. walks of life and right. discuss real stories and this is one of the real stories that you mentioned which is also truly inspiring for me even uh, you know as a woman I've always always been advocate of uh, you know women and finance and right. women being very aware of finances because I see even today with most of the women that I know they have their own income they have their own careers but a lot of money is being handled by their uh, spouses right. or right. their fathers right. and um, without that knowledge you know these circumstances where in from which your mom or your chachi got you guys out of and right. really uh, you know provided you the best upbringing that you are today right. uh, managing uh, two decades of you know this yes. time they could not have done that without right. the very important knowledge of managing finances yes. because yes. everything in life in this world costs money yes. so I think yes. that's uh, a very uh, unexpected uh, lesson that mm-hmm. we got from this story about mm-hmm. you know uh, just women participating as mm-hmm. much as uh, you know men today in finance which, which is the need of the hour yes. for sure, um, for sure. If you have surplus from your income, go ahead and start investing by yourself. Yes. Know that one day you might need to, you know, good or bad circumstances, you yeah. might need to take care of finances yourself. And that's not, I mean, for you, it was a very, you know, uh, tragic situation. But even today with so many women just um, living, um, you know, single for very long, right. uh, managing or supporting parents, supporting their um, you know, family members, right. uh, they need to make these important financial decisions. 100%. And the problem 100%. is if you don't have the right knowledge, you kind of get into the wrong kind of products. You don't know who is the right source of information or right source of advice. Right. So that awareness and education is really important and right. talking about it most yes. importantly. Yes, yes. And not to feel judged or not to be afraid of asking questions, not to be afraid of learning or dipping your toes into investments, not right. to be afraid of making mistakes. I think that's yes. truly important. So very inspiring story, Nipun, over there. I totally did not expect it, but thank you so mm-hmm. much for sharing that. Um, so uh, would you like to give any piece of advice from your entire career, very mm-hmm. enriching one, uh, to young entrepreneurs today I think um, okay so I would just uh, tell each one of them that okay uh, I think never stop dreaming um, do know why you are doing it don't just do because any other person is doing it or, or probably it looks fascinating you should know the reason why you want to start or why you want to become an entrepreneur because if you are clear on that particular part, I'm very sure you will sooner or later figure out your things. Then, then, then be patient. Have perseverance of, uh, of, of the fact that success will not come on day zero. Uh, it will take time. Uh, there has been no story in the world where success came on day zero. Uh, probably we only hear uh, the good things in the media on WhatsApp or on in this, uh, in, in this uh, new social media world. So no one knows the struggles behind. So probably uh, for you also, people might have heard that, okay, you have raised funds, but no one would know what happened before that. Or I I still remember you seeing in the first row in one of our Rise event when I just joined as someone who was very attentively listening all the VCs that, uh, okay, what what, uh, uh, might be that 10 seconds advice uh, that that VC will tell and and probably I'll use it in my later pitches. So no one would know that. Uh, So, so... Uh, be be uh, be aware and be 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 mindful of the fact that uh, the life is not just about great and good things there yeah. are a lot of bad things there are a lot of build up things there are a lot of those things uh, which will never come in limelight but they're still part of that story yeah. so uh, what i've seen a lot of people start they feel it's a very fascinating world yeah. and as soon as they'll see the first disappointment 
they will crash out yeah I and then uh, i'm sure you must have seen certain instances in our razor pay rice conversations also where uh, we see a lot of people who uh, end up being disappointed with their first attempts Mm. first yc application attempts yeah. first time they have tried to build something probably have been copied by someone else these things will happen yeah. and uh, that is what will make you strong that will make you an experienced professional or experienced entrepreneur who knows things who knows uh, contingencies before it may happen right so so i think learn i think more you will learn more you will become uh, as an experienced and as a person who probably would be able to judge things right. a lot quicker than anyone else and if it is a journey of 2 years 3 years 4 years 5 years it's okay, it's uh, okay. that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur you can become an entrepreneur even yeah. at 40 so Absolutely. no one is stopping you so so why yes. what what is a hurry why do you want yeah, to become yeah you really have to live through uh, that experience you have to live through that, that is, experience that, uh. the beauty lies there yes, yes and yes, uh, yes. there's one saying that i i don't know where that saying is from but i really like is um, it takes years to become an overnight success yes, yes, so yes. when we see like you know even a rock star getting that big hit you don't know how many years of practice they have done right when you see an entrepreneur raising like or becoming a unicorn or raising their first check you don't know when they first started some of them in fact have had multiple failed startups before they managed most the first check most yeah. of them most of them the problem is i think how कुछ आजकल के एंटरप्रेन्योर्स लेट से एक जेप्टो का एग्जांपल लेके कि अच्छा 20 साल में फंडिंग रेस की जा सकती है रितेश अग्रवाल का एग्जांपल लेके 20 साल में फंडिंग रेस की जा सकती है आई नो दे आर ग्रेट सक्सेस स्टोरीज या डेफिनेटली बट दे आर ओनली 0.0001% ऑफ दैट लॉट या जो हु गॉट लकी प्रोबेबली इन देयर फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट या एंड आई बिलीव लाइक दे डेफिनेटली गॉट लकी बट आल्सो दे वर प्रिपेयर्ड इन सो मेनी अदर वेज दैट यू मे नॉट बी आई एम श्योर दैट्स व्हाई आई सेड दे आर ग्रेट सक्सेस स्टोरीज यू डोंट नो व्हेन आई से लकी अगेन जस्ट टू जस्ट टू फॉर दैट माय मैसेज डजंट गो राइट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई बिलीव देयर इज नथिंग कॉल्ड लक सो आई आई रीइटरेट माय आंसर दे वर नॉट लकी आई थिंक दे वर प्रिपेयर्ड एज यू जस्ट मेंशन लक इज आल्सो आर यू प्रिपेयर्ड गुड इनफ फॉर द राइट अपॉर्चुनिटी एट द राइट टाइम and they so were. so they were definitely yeah. so but 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 again that doesn't mean that okay it, you have to do it that way fit yeah. in every single story exactly and uh, i think everyone's trajectory is also different every, and everyone's journey is yes, different yes, yes. and beautiful in its own way yes, so yes, yes. i think yeah for me as an entrepreneur or you know um, fa- first time founder i would say that i just try and live through each and every experience yes, yes, yes. good or bad success or failure there are days when most of the days in fact where I'm things sure, don't I'm go sure. right I'm sure, I'm right sure. and then i just like to take it as part of part and parcel of being an entrepreneur yes, yes, yes. and those are the days when i like to think about that you know i am right in the middle of what i used to aspire for right. when i was in a job i used to always look at other founders and be like you know when will i get that privilege to right. be a founder so right. today being a founder to be honest for me is a privilege sure. and i want to live every bit of it that is so, how it should be i think exactly. because grass will always look greener on the other side so you have to make yourself content with what you are doing exactly. today and and uh, if you'll have nothing in the end uh, if if there is no success and only failures and failures you'll at least have a story yeah to share it with the story. world and for yourself for not to do things which you have done previously right. yeah. so if nothing else then you'll have experience and and su- success comes along and success then, anyways will eventually amazing, come yeah. if you are the right person and exactly. you have the right focus right passion and you know why you want to become an entrepreneur that why for me is everything that's why amazing. you want to become an entrepreneur so if you know that i think uh, you will succeed not today eventually you will succeed for that's sure that's amazing hmm. i think this uh, whole segment will be great for our rice community founders as well <laughs> uh, so now we'll we'll uh, get into this very interesting last segment of the podcast which okay. is a rapid fire round okay, uh, okay. I, i feel it's self explanatory you know okay. you have to answer really quick so let's get started all set yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. mountains or beaches i think i'm a beaches person uh what technology will, do you think will change the world next i am not a tech person but i still the way ai is influencing the world and my life also and my org life also and everyone who is around me i think something around ai where where yeah. possibly each and everything might just happen automatically without people yeah. uh, one thing which may not happen where fe- i feel very confident on that which is relationship building and emotional intelligence and uh, i think apart from that everything can be uh, probably Arish. managed by ai in future okay yeah. one word to describe your first job uh, i think i think it <laughs> one word i think i was very stupid uh, i think <laughs> i i i took it too casually okay. i i think uh, i thought ki 
मिल गया मिल गया तो आई थिंक आई वुड जस्ट से आई टू टू कैजुअली आई शुड हैव बीन अ लॉट मोर सीरियस एट दैट जॉब ओके हाउ डू यू डी स्ट्रेस डी स्ट्रेस ओके फॉर मी इट्स म्यूजिक आई थिंक आई आई लिसन टू म्यूजिक फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम ईच एंड एवरी डे एंड आई थिंक दैट इज वॉट गिवस मी अ लॉट ऑफ पीस इफ यू कूड हैव डिनर विद वन फेमस फिगर हु वुड इट बी I think might be a little controversial, but I think I will still want to call that out. I think I think because of the aura and because of the uh, personality, I think it would be Narendra Modi. Okay. Uh, what uh, item is always present in your kitchen? I think that would be uh, all the masalas because I'm a big time Delhi six ka foodie. Okay. So Do I cook? always have a, a chaat masala in my kitchen, okay. which chaat I masala. always put in, like on top of each and every food I eat. Okay. So, hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Even in Maggi. Maggi, yeah. So Maggi, so I prepare it like that. Like okay. I add at least two three masalas beforehand. Okay. So it's not never a pani plus Maggi plus Maggi masala. Right. It it's will right. have at least four it to five masala. more ingredients. Uh, okay. That's how my Maggi is prepared. What's yeah. your go-to productivity hack? Productivity hack. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, I I I feel I am I'm generally productive at my working hours. I have I do, I hardly feel uh, lethargic during that ten uh, to seven time, but in case I feel uh, a little bit not so productive, I think I always pick a room, uh, corner room alone time. I again put some music uh, in the background ten fifteen minutes, and probably I start making a to do list on things where I'm stressing, which for which I'm stressing about. Okay. And and generally that works. Uh, I create that list and I start following that. That okay what. things need to be done today what and can i postpone and what can i do next week okay. and generally that 15 minutes breakout works for me works yeah. uh which business leader would you like to collaborate with if not collaboration i think i'm generally very fascinated by of course these kamath brothers nitin and uh, nikhil and dipinder goel uh, probably probably not two years back but but with some recent developments and how zomato is uh, is is going crazy in last two years in terms of innovations and in terms of showing that it can actually be a sustainable business so these are definitely few leaders and i think one i am by default lucky to work with someone as inspirational uh, nal as shashank, shashank at razor pay so i think uh, uh, that part is okay. already partially fulfilled from here. for me yeah. <laughs> okay and one best piece mm-hmm. of advice that you have received advice i have received okay so i think the best would be something something uh, um i think uh, one of my friend uh, told me uh, one day when i when i was very confused that uh, why i should uh, stop working or why should i close down a segment of my business so he just mentioned me that power of uh, destruction at the right time is as important as power of creation so if you don't uh, stop doing something at a time uh, where where it is super important uh, you might just even lose things what you have already created So so if a brand is not working well out of your entire kitty of 50 brands it's okay to close down that brand if a portfolio service let's say for cash wisery is not working and it is giving you some kind of losses and some kind of uh, uh, some 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 kind of those matrix which are not working for other products it's okay to close it out that's, don't be emotionally attached that's with a it. very important advice. and then just destruct things which are not working out for you yeah. so i think that advice for me and i think this is one advice i have never even found anywhere on google also i don't know from <laughs> where did he some cost fallacy hmm. ha um, so, so bias i think i was really hit, hit very hard by this advice and uh, i have adopted it in my professional work and personal life as well and it has worked that's uh, very profound yeah. and hmm. if you were not last one if hmm. you were not in the current career that you are in what would be your alternative career i think for this i would say uh, I am, I think, at my alternate career only, okay. <laughs> and I think I'm doing something uh, uh, as a part of a larger goal, mm-hmm. and uh, for me, this is alternate world. Okay. I don't know two years, three years, five years, or ten years. I wish to become an entrepreneur again. So I think that's okay. a part of that All larger. All the best journey. to you for that yeah. dream. We yeah. will be looking forward to that, yes, yes. and uh, what great things you have to bring to this world. Right. So thank you, everyone, for uh, you know listening to us. Thank you, Nupun, for being here. Uh, please uh, stay with us. Continue to come back to watch our future episodes. Uh, do like, uh, subscribe, and share with anyone who who you think will benefit from this. Thank you again.